Okay, we're back. I think we're on part four. And our bubbles and leaves have had a chance to dry. And just to show you what I was talking about, let me find a dry brush. This one's dry. You can just brush away your chalk line. Gone. Like it was never there. Or you could just wipe it away with your finger. However you prefer to do it. Okay. So, make sure we're in view. We are. Um, now, most people, when they do silhouettes these days, and the bird silhouettes are very popular, they want to put them on a tree branch. I don't want to be on a tree branch. I want to be a little different. So our birds are going to sit on a wire. And our wire is not going to go straight across, it's going to kind of droop. Now we're going to lose some of this real pretty work that we did with our bubbles. And after I get the birds in, I was thinking we might need to add some bubbles up in the corner here. And down in this corner here, you know, just a few. We'll see once we get our birds on here. So, um, just to draw a line so we know where our wire is going to be and our birds. Now to do a bird, it is kind of um, I think I, I want to do three, but I'm thinking maybe two. We'll see here. You can kind of do an oval and give them a roundish head and a beak and triangle down for a tail. Now, let's do one over here, oval, tail, his head, and a beak. That's just our implied shape, okay? It's not when we go to fill them in with paint. And maybe we'll have one here. Uh, don't like the direction I did that oval. like this, but he's going to be facing the other way, he's going to be facing down, his beak coming this way, and his tail up there, okay, let's see how that works, and we're going to kind of stay with our same colors, except that I'm not going to do a yellow bird, I will probably do purple. So over here, I'm going to put a pink bird, and I'm going to use a smaller brush because I feel like I have more control with the smaller brush, and I had to keep uh, misting my palette because dinner was ready, so I took that opportunity to allow the background to really dry really well and put a little extra charge on my camera. So well, it was a very good dinner. Um, John made us some barbecue ribs and corn on the cob and a salad. It was very yummy. Uh, okay, so I'm going to paint him in. Now we're bringing his little, his bum down below the line so that we don't have to draw feet. And bringing his head. Filling in. Okay. And his tail. And like I said, we were going to lose some of the bubbles and leaves, but that's part of what helps us get dimension. Now, of course, um, you may not get the coverage that you want. You may have to go back and revisit, which I will, to fill in the space. I'm going to hold off on his beak. You rinse. I also got myself some nice, fresh, clean water that just got all muddied up with my pink. And over on the pink rain side, we are going to do the teal bird. Get his shape 
in. And you can reshape them if you don't like the, the shape that you originally did with the um, with your chalk line. And down into his tail. Head up here. And like I said, we'll probably have to go back and put in a second coat. Okay. And I need to, I wasn't prepared, dig out my purple. So bear with me for a minute. I'll just just, um, not violet. Uh, there we go. Now my purple is very, 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 very dark. Very, 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 very powerful. And, excuse me, we will need some white definitely to mix with it. To tone it down and make it more of a lavender. And, I don't I think this painting is very fun. It's very colorful. Um, everybody always wants to do their silhouettes in black. Why? Why do they have to be black? Why can't they just, you know, be in color and be fun and abstract and whimsical? And so that is kind of what we're going for here. It's my brush again. Get that teal out. And mix, mix my purple and the white. Oh, pretty color. Yes, pretty, pretty color. It's almost better if you have a palette knife to mix with instead of using your brush because, um, you know, your brush just gets all muddied up and can make it very hard to work with. Oops. Nice clean line there, which is fine because once we add the wow punch to it, if you notice, the only place we used black in this painting was the underpainting, but we're going to use black to add some wow to it once we get our birdies in and dried. Tail. Flick it up that way a little bit more. Look at that, this stuff dries so fast. We're going to go back and do a second layer on our pink because it's dry. That was our first birdie. And uh, fill them in. So it doesn't look so see through. Bubbles are nice, but that's not where we want to see them. It's not in our birdie. that out. He's not quite dry yet, but I think he's dry enough to go over top of him. I 
um, some people are comfortable with a big brush and a big brush will help you paint looser get more of that um, whimsical look if that's what you like also if you hold your brush towards the end it's not so controlling as like, like a pencil I try to hold mine in the middle because I call me a control freak if you want I like to have control over my brush Too much of an indent there. Here we go. Okay, so that is, I think, looking pretty darn good. Um, I doubt that purple is ready. Let me. Eh, it's not. Um, well, we need the purple to be dry. Go for it. <coughs> um, here in my area, it's starting to feel very humid because we're going to get some rain. And we just moved here like a year ago, and last year it seemed like it rained every day. I kept telling John, I said, Boy, I feel like we moved into the rainforest. You know, because it just rained constantly. It was, couldn't plan to do anything, you know, didn't know my way around the area. Still don't know my way around that much, but a lot more than I did last year. And, uh, you know, Jenna and I just really felt like we were stuck here. You know, because we, we shared a, uh, a GPS and Finally, he, he bought his own, because I'm like, I don't feel like I can leave the house without the GPS. And, uh, so we, we never leave home without it, that's for sure. I mean, some things that we go to all the time, like we know where the grocery store is now, and we know where uh, her piano lessons are, and I don't know if you can hear it, but she's practicing now. She's trying to learn how to play Furry Lease. It's a Beethoven song. She's in her first year of piano and she uh, wants to do a recital. So I don't think she's ready, but she thinks she's ready and it's like you gotta practice, practice, practice. So anyhow, we've gone in and we've put a, a second coat on those. So now we want to um, get some fresh white, just a little bit because we don't need a whole lot. We're going to try and blend in a little white. Give it some little bit of shape. Not, not a lot. You know, maybe down his back. A little around his head. Just a little bit. Kind of like just dry brushing it in. A little down in his tail. Same for this guy. Hmm. Not sure if you'd really call this um, silhouettes or not. Um, you know, because we are adding some details, and the silhouettes, they're just uh, the, the shape, you know, the implied image, but because we're not making them realistic, we are going to say that it is like silhouettes. go. Just a little bit more over here on this guy. Okay. So now, the fun part. 
and get to add some wow. Now I'm going to use my little, little brush. See how little that is? That's tiny. And I'm going to use our black. And underneath him, underneath our birds, we're going to give it a little bit of a shadow. Let's outline the underneath. Maybe um, black on there. A few lines in our tail. Beak. I think it's going to be pointed more upwards, like that, and this guy, if I'm right handed, this is very awkward, I can't see what I'm doing. You know, like I said, I'm kind of working backward with my paint over to the left of me instead of over on this side where I can just dab. And he kind of looks like he's looking this way a little bit. So let's do his beak upward. That. And this side is our underneath for our purple bird. Oops. Pressed too hard, so I got a little bit of a thick line there, but that's okay. We are fine with it because we are just having fun. Woo. Okay, that's not the steadiest of ways to angle myself. Come up a little bit. And his beak is going to be here. Okay, he's um Ones in his tail. Okay. So, now you can or you can't. Choice is totally yours on whether or not you want to give your guys eyes. Um, this one here, he kind of looks like you should see probably both. But I'm only going to put one in. And I'm going to put one in here and one in here and then we'll go back when that dries and add some white to it oh I don't know why I just rinsed that okay now we want to paint our wire and I'm going to use just a tad bit bigger brush, my angle brush, so it goes at an angle, and you lead your stroke with the short end, and it helps you get a nice line, and I'm going to do our wire. Oops. Make it a little thicker. Because these are big boy birds here. It's part of my elbow. Just trying to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, 
and I think maybe I was right. <coughs> mm, sorry about wanting some bubbles up here and maybe a couple of down here. Um, but we're going to go into our white and just underneath the eye make like a comma. And uh, give them a dot. Um, I feel like that one shows enough. this one either. Okay, so let me punch myself because Jenna threw those away. A new stencil, a new little circle. And that's just the sound of me. making myself a new stencil. Okay, and oh, one bigger one. Okay, that's my uh, Martha Stewart one inch circle punch there. So, um, it's my stencil brush. And let me I think I want to do yellow and I have it coming off the edge. And don't be afraid to turn your painting. I'm going to turn it so I can get over here without smearing my other paints. And I'm going to put a yellow one in here. Cleaning my stencil brush, wiping it with the paper towel to get all the color. It shouldn't have been much color because I didn't use much, but it's it gets in there with these brushes. I might be drying it out so I don't have any excess water in it. And maybe um, the teal. Let me. my palette's a wreck. Okay, so pardon my reach here. So I'm going to have like a piece of this coming off the corner. Nice. And maybe a little one in the teal. See, our birds are these are floating in front of our birds, so we can't put it over top of our bird pieces. And flip this back around. Make sure we're still in view. We are. Um, clean the teal out of my stencil brush. pink, some of that white, tap it off, tap it off, tap, 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 
this way. Put one in there. Oh, it looks a little too wet. Okay. And piece of a big one coming off the corner there so that it'll look like a half a circle like that and we're going to rinse again and we're going to throw a leaf up there and a leaf down here and you know I was thinking we might need a dragonfly or something floating around in there but I think with our bubbles and our leaves, I think that makes our background interesting enough. And let's see. I'm liking this a lot. Let me fold that up. Oh, Jenna just came in the room and she's <gasps> okay. <laughs> leaf up here. Green's not showing too good. Yellow, yellow. Hey mom, I have a question. Why aren't you showing their paints? The paints that you're using? Because I only have so much room to work with here. And then I want to leaf down here. No, I mean like why don't I like... Because I tell them what colors. Not everybody's going to have the same colors. Now those leaves showed up a little bit darker than those, but they're wet. And I think we can call this painting finished other than putting our name on it. Yep. I can't see where it really needs anything else unless you wanted to um, add more bubbles. No, I think it has plenty of bubbles. Where's my little brush? Where's that little guy at? Here he is. If you wanted to take, okay, here's a pink bird and maybe I want a little streak of some teal in there with him just to add some interest. And then over on our teal bird, you know, maybe we want to take a little bit of pink and just dry brush, brush some color into him like that. Well, and what about the purple bird? Which our purple him? bird, since we did not make a yellow bird, let's put some yellow, see what happens. Dry brush. See, that was a little wet there. And hey, it looks yellow. This adds a little bit of interest to it. You don't have to. You stop it wherever you want to stop, at whatever point you want to stop at. Because, you know what? It's your painting. I recommend putting your signature on that one because that's where they can see you. And, you know, you get people... I don't have a Monet name or a Van Gogh or... Any other fancy name? Picasso. I don't have a fancy name. And... Uh, actually, you know, my name's very common, being Robin, and um, I don't think Robin quite come gives it. Whoa! What? It just leaves. I know, but it's never done that before. Does it all the time. Anyhow, so if you just want to use your initials, but somehow fancy them up, I think I'm gonna use purple.